A few weeks ago, I built out my laundry room by building and installing cabinets. During that project, I built a custom cabinet that holds two laundry hampers on a pull-out drawer. That way, the hampers inside are hidden when the door is closed, but is accessible by a simple pull of this drawer handle. This is such a quick and easy build, but I love it so much that I wanted to share it. So let me show you how it went together. I do have plans available, but it's kind of tricky to know if one person's cabinet will fit into your space. So first, let's talk about sizing and layout. When designing my laundry room cabinets, I started in a new modeling software called Home By Me for planning the room's layout. In this, you can add in real products and make sure you're happy with the overall room design. Once I was, I switched over to a companion software called Make By Me, which is more traditional 3D modeling, but it is so easy to learn. It has stock material already in it for you to pull from. You can flip, rotate, and move things around in order to bring your ideas to life before ever heading to your shop. When doing this, I started with stock cabinet sizes, then built two custom cabinets to fill in the remaining space, which is how I landed on the size for this one. But what you can do if you want this cabinet is make it a freestanding unit in your space, or you can set it where you want it and find a stock cabinet to fill in the remaining space. Another great feature of Make By Me is it will auto-generate a cut list, material list, and even a step-by-step -step process for you. There's a link down in the description if you wanna check out the programs. Now for this cabinet, it takes seven parts to make the body, so not too many. If you would like a set of plans with dimensions, and I have that available. It also comes with a CNC cut file if you have a CNC. Now I personally painted my cabinet, so I used whatever three quarter inch scrap material I had, which in this case is MDF. I start off by laying the side pieces on their back and attaching what will be the bottom. When joining things together, it will be the same process on everything. I use DAP's weld wood wood glue, then pre-drill and run in a screw. The sledge here will be where the tow kick plate goes in, which is this board here. I'm using it as a spacer to make sure the bottom is attached square. After using it to align the board from the inside, I also use it as a spacer to guide me on where to pre-drill and run in a screw. Double checking that it worked. It did, so I continue attaching. I used this trick again when I needed to run in the center hole. As long as the board is flush to the front, it will indicate where the three quarter inch material starts, which tells you where you can pre-drill your hole. After attaching the first side, I attach the second side the same way. However, since the toe kick now can't fit inside to check for square, I used a tape. I just measured the top, then made sure the bottom dimension matched before driving my screws in to attach. Next is to attach that toe kick, which should line up perfectly flush to both of the side pieces on both the front and the back. Same with the backboard, that will make up the back of the platform once this cabinet is stood up right. Perfect, that is the bottom done. So now let's flip this around, but still leave it on its back and start working on the top boards. This board here will join the sides on the back edge while also giving me a place to screw it into the wall later when installing it in the space. The last piece to attach here is a similar board as the last, but this one joins the front edges of the sides. Since I can't use my workbench to rust it against, what I like to do is use a clamp to act as a third hand. These squeeze clamps are great to hold them in the general area while I go to one side at a time, perfectly place the board, and then attach. And this board will give me something to screw into the countertop later when it gets installed. All right, with that attached, let me spin this around, tilt it up, and just like that, we have a cabinet. Oh, well, I forgot the back. Hold on, <laughs> that is a quick add. Let's just lay this thing back down, but this time laying it on its face. I made the back from quarter inch MDF as it doesn't need to be super thick. Quarter inch material will do a great job at holding it square and keeping it from racking. You'll see that my back is in two pieces. That's because I'm using scraps and don't care if there's a seam. Alrighty, and now that is a complete body. So for now, let's just slide this one over and make room for me to bring in the parts to build out the inside drawer, which will hold the hampers. All of these parts are included on the plans and cut list. I start off by grabbing what will be the bottom. Personally, I always like to make sure it fits within the body before attaching things, just because I have been known to grab the wrong part. But once I made sure it fit, I attached the two sides, which look like wings. These already have dados cut into them for the bottom to slip right into. 
Now this bottom will be locked in once the front and back are attached, but I went ahead and threw in a few screws. But then I went to the back and attached the specially designed back. These slots and this pre-drilled through hole are needed for the undermount drawer slides that I'm gonna be using. Now, if you use my exact cabinet dimensions, you can not only use the exact hampers I bought, but also the undermount drawer slides. However, note that if you want to change the dimensions, then you're probably gonna have to change the undermount drawer slide because they are very particular. Or another option if you wanna change dimensions is just to scrap the undermount drawer slides and go with the side mount ones instead. So lots of ways that you can build this cabinet. Let me pause and thank this video sponsor, which is Ariat. I grew up in their boots. Last year I was introduced to their women's workwear line and now I have expanded into their casual clothing as well. Whether you're in the market for men's or women's workwear, boots or casual, Ariat truly does have you covered. They're a company founded on technology and innovation with the goal of making high quality, long lasting attire. Ariat is one of the first companies I know of that created a women's workwear line that was designed by women. It kind of seems obvious, but as a woman in the trades, I have found it very frustrating that I really only have men items to choose from. So this is really big for women in the industry. It's a small thing, but I love having a pocket I can put my entire hand into. Yes, I love that Ariat not only came out with this dedicated line to women, but they're also expanding on all their other lines and creating brand new ones every time I look. Yes, you can count on that I'm picking up some of those polos for the golf course. If you'd like to check out some area gear, then know that you can save 10% off your first order by using the link down in the description. But getting back to the assembly, I now go to the front and attach the large front panel. This might seem big and boring right now, but you'll see why the scale is needed. For now, let me go ahead and put it inside the body and make sure it all looks good. and it is as simple as that. From here on out, everything is finishing details. I could attach the undermount drawer slides to the bottom side of the cabinet, then go to the inside of the cabinet, you know, of course, once it's installed, and attach the rails with screws. To connect the two, I could carry the inside portion over to the body, set it on the rails, and then push it in until the two components clip together. Ooh. 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 That is so satisfying. Then since I'm making mine look like two doors and a top drawer, I crawled inside and attached these pieces to the outside by screwing them on the inside while Jacob held them to the correct spacing. Now it's kind of hard to get a good angle of this cabinet because the space is really tight, but without the countertop in place, you can see how it works. Two hampers fit perfectly in the drawer so that you can pull it out and toss in your clothes, then hide them away again by pushing it in. I personally love the way it looks with the three faux components, whereas the unit on its left really is a top drawer and two doors. If yours was gonna be next to a functioning cabinet, then you can make your door arrangement be anything in order to match and blend like this. All right, and I think that wraps it up. If you have anything to do with cabinets, whether it be a bathroom, a laundry room, or a workshop, then know that I have a four-part series covering how to paint MDF properly, how to build custom cabinets, how to upgrade store-bought cabinets, and also how to build countertops from scrap two by fours. So basically everything you see in this room, I have a video on how to do. So just remember, if you can imagine it, you can build it. And I hope that I'm some sort of inspiration or guide to help get you started in that. I will see you on whatever I'm building next.